Greetings. <clears throat> Today I'd like to talk about the destruction of a believer. One of the things done when reading scripture is to miss the application of text. A rule of thumb in interpretation of a text is there are many applications but only one interpretation. Understanding that becomes a reason why we can agree to disagree and yet there is only one interpretation. Interpretation will be based upon context. For instance, the context of Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 goes back to Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. Jesus sees the multitude and then goes up into a mountain. He separates from the multitude and the disciples followed him up into the mountain. Matthew 5 says, He opened his mouth and taught them, his disciples, not the multitude, saying, This is the context of Matthew 7.13. What Jesus did was speak about the kingdom of heaven. The wrong application is to make this about going to heaven or heaven. Jesus is speaking about the kingdom, not heaven. The kingdom of heaven is applicable to the kingdom which was being offered to Israel during the ministry of Jesus. The kingdom was rejected by the nation Israel, and yet the disciples thought Jesus would restore this kingdom to Israel by waiting for the promise of the Spirit in Jerusalem. So, they are in Jerusalem waiting for the promise of the Spirit and the Lord restoring the kingdom to Israel. That's according to Acts chapter 1 verses 4 to 6. The context of Matthew 7 13 is Matthew 5 1, indicating that Jesus is not speaking about going to heaven, but he is speaking about a kingdom that he rules and reigns that is promised to Israel. This goes back to what he said to Abraham and to David in the Old Testament in relation to Israel as a nation. The Gospel of Matthew is known as the book about the kingdom. When the Lord does refer to heaven, it is in relationship to reward, Matthew 5.12. In either case, reward is the focal point for service or walk of those in the kingdom. That means we will see what is also true about those who suffer loss of reward. Since salvation is by the grace of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. These things are about the walk of those who belong to the Lord, and not about those who might be professors of salvation, but not truly saved. Or, who are saved, that some teach, will lose their salvation. That is the usual applications of this text. From Matthew chapter 5 through 7. Matthew 7 starts out saying, Enter ye at the straight gate. The Lord is not giving a broad picture about how to be saved or to prove a person is truly saved. This is kingdom teaching about entering the kingdom age when the Lord Jesus Christ will rule and reign on the earth for 1,000 years. Only those who belong to the Lord by grace that saves have the right to enter the kingdom age, or in fact, heaven. Jesus tells the disciples there will be few, meaning not many, that find the way that leadeth unto life. This life has to do with the kingdom age. This cannot be about the gospel of salvation preached today, because we know there are many being saved through the gospel message being preached. 
Yet in relation to kingdom teaching about the kingdom, there will be few who find the way to the straight gate into the kingdom age who will rule and reign with the Lord, according to Matthew 7.14. Those who refuse the narrow way, and we're speaking about believers, those who refuse the narrow way into the kingdom will suffer destruction. The word destruction means or implies ruin or loss. It implies death. It implies a just recompense for walking in the broad path away from righteousness. Destruction implies a reversal of what is true for those who enter the straight gate into the kingdom age. These truths are about the results of a person's service and what could be forfeited or taken away in the blessings to yet be rewarded for following the straight paths of righteousness. Once the distinction is made between service in our walk and, salva by, and salvation by grace that saves, apart from the way we walk, we will appropriately be applying the kingdom teachings of Matthew to reward or to the destruction of reward. Entering the kingdom of heaven will be totally dependent upon what we do that is the will of the Father, according to Matthew 7, verse 21. It would be remiss to overlook this, to try and teach that some who don't enter into the kingdom were false professors of faith, and they lost their salvation. Grace saves without works. So, something else is going on in the context of what Jesus is speaking. Remember, he's speaking to his disciples. This is truth for the believer. Destruction and loss for the believer is on the table when it comes to how we walk. But that destruction and loss will have to do with reward not with grace that saves. In the Corinthian church, sexual sin was so bad that one believer, Paul said to the rest of the church, was to be delivered to, the day, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5.5 5. Grace saves, but the walk of the believer is judged. If there ever was a verse that supports eternal security, it is 1 Corinthians 5, 5. Destruction can come to the believer in this life we live, and in the age to come, which is the kingdom age. But the salvation of the Spirit never changes. That's because spiritual birth is of God. In that day, before the Lord, the believer will be held accountable for following the straight path or walking in the broad way of destruction. We could suffer loss or reversal of the things God promises conditioned upon how we walk. But Paul knew, even so, the Spirit will be saved in that day. Paul consistently admonished believers to live according to the will of the Father, or as we would say today, according to the Word of God. Or, one would see the destruction of the believer. Thank you.